Good morning, Mr. Walls. Uh, we just met. My name is John DeGravel. Could you tell us your full name as it appears on your birth certificate? Gregory Stephen Walls. And who do you work for? BP. And how long have you worked for BP? I, had, I came with them through the ARCO merger, so approximately over 30 years. And what is your current job title? I am a drilling engineering team leader. And is that the same position you held on April the 20th of 2010? Yes, it is. Uh, are your duties today the same as they were on April the 20th of 2010? Yes, they are. And tell us what those duties are. I oversee the engineering planning and engineering support during the operations. But the reason you try, you're interested in keeping the, the zone isolated is so you don't have a blowout, right? That's one no, of the reasons. Not a, blo a blowout. We're, I mean, when we look at these things, you know, <clears throat> we were not looking at this from a well control perspective. Everything we were looking at it from was a remedial cementing type of viewpoint and, and from productions. And one of the aspects of that is to make sure that you, have, you don't have where you can build pressure on the backside back to surface. But it was really uh, the you know, focus is around remedial cementing and uh, uh, cross flow potentials, et cetera. And in fact, Mr. Gagliano came to see you on the morning of the 19th, the day before the blowout, correct? Yes, sir. And he asked you if he'd seen, sorry, let me put that again. Mr. Gagliano asked you if you had seen the report, isn't that right? Yes, sir. So he wanted to make certain this new report was in your hands. Yes, sir. This was in BP's Houston offices, correct? Yes. And you told him you hadn't seen it, right? That, I, you hadn't I, opened it and read it. I right? hadn't opened it and read it, I believe. So okay. I, I'm, I don't recall my exact words. Okay. And he, Mr. Gagliano pointed out to you the channeling problem that you had, yes, according sir. to the model, correct? Yes, sir. We talked about channeling. And you also discussed the ECD effects with him, correct? Yes. And he, he indicated that the reduction in the number of centralizers was creating an issue with channeling according to the model, correct? Yes, sir. Let's look at ex, uh, tab 17. This is the April 18 Halliburton Optisem report. Right. Do you recognize that? Uh, yes, sir. I let me verify something. Yes, sir. And this is the report based on the modeling for six centralizers, correct? Sorry, seven centralizers, as it turns out. Yes, sir. And this is what Mr. Gagliano came to talk with you about on the morning of the 19th. Yes, sir. Telling you the model predicted increased channeling and higher ECDs, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And what pages of that report did you look at? I was looking at the, on the report pages, uh, I believe it would be uh, page 24 on the, uh, it, where there's a graph. Yes, it was um, looking at pages 24 and 25 of the, of the reports page number. Mm -hmm. Do you specifically recall looking at that page? Yes, sir. And you recall not looking at any other pages? Th this is all I recall looking at. I'm asking you if you're certain now it's all you looked at or it's just the only thing you recall you might have looked at other things. All I can recall looking at is these. Okay. Did you ask anyone on your team to read the report based on Mr. Gagliano's concern about increased channeling and increased ECDs? No, I did not. Did Mr. Gagliano tell you that in his view the increased channeling ECDs were not a problem? Well, he, he, he was expressing the concern that we were back up and the risk with lost circulation. And that, but we also then talked about that we had the contingency, if that occurred, that we would have to go in, run the bond log, and then we may be having to do remedial squeeze work. During this conversation with Mr. Gagliano on April 19th, mm -hmm. you and he got into a discussion that maybe you needed to do a bottoms-up circulation. Yes sir. yes, sir. That was one of the things that we talked about. Now, how did that come up? That was in the conversation about the, 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 uh, uh, cha uh, the channeling. Okay. And why would that help with channeling? There again, it was just centering around moving the uh, the mud that was sitting there, uh, had been sitting on the backside, uh, and freshening it up, 
th as far as getting fresh mud across the open hole interval. And why would that help? Why would getting fresh mud across the it, open it, interval it, help it, with it, channeling? It, it, it was from a displacement efficiency standpoint. It would it would improve the dis once the cement rounded the corner. It may help the cement uh, displace any cuttings or anything like that out along the, uh, in the existing hole. Okay, and that would help you get a better quality cement job, correct? It, 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 in his, his thought, yes. I mean, they may improve the cement. <coughs> and was that your thought as well? I, I, y yes, I mean, moving, f f making sure that we had plenty of uh, fresh mud moving across the open hole was uh, important, is, was important to me, yes. Who at BP was ultimately responsible for the design of the Macondo well? Objective form. The uh, engineering design uh, would be me as the drilling engineering team leader. Do you agree with me that if the well had not been put in an underbalanced position, that that would have uh, that that the the well would ultimately not have allowed hydrocarbons to have escaped up through the riser. Yes, I would agree with that. And when you learned, Mr. Waltz, that the well had been had been displaced, the mud had been displaced with seawater. Did that interest you, as an engineer, the senior engineer, on the Mikado? Yeah, I mean, I, it was all contingent upon that we had a good negative test. And with regard to the centralizers, Halliburton started out with different recommendations, the number that they thought required, and ended up with BP saying we're going to run only six as opposed to 21. Yes, sir. And, and so the point being is, regardless of what the reasons were behind the decision, BP did not follow Halliburton's recommendation regarding the number of centralizers to be used on the casing, did it? We did not. And you do recall that on the night of the 18th, at about 9.58 or so, Jesse had sent an updated OptiSim report. Yes, sir. Showing what would happen with the with use of seven centralizers. Yes, sir. You remember that, and showing that there would be a severe gas flow problem. You remember seeing that, do you not? Not that night, no, sir. But I you saw it on the 19th. Jesse p made a comment to it when, in, early on when we got talking about the channeling, yes. And that was the next day, was that a, a, in the morning call the next morning or some other time on the night? That was after morning call, it was like mid-morning as I recall. Okay, and, and Jesse made that comment to you or were you and others about the channeling in the report and the gas flow potential? The, it was to me as I recall initially. Okay. And we had a dialogue around it. And it was, so it was with me. Okay. And, um, and so you and Jesse are talking, and he's, did you ask him about it, or did he bring it up about the OptiSim report that he'd sent out the night before? He came to me. Okay, and he came to you. And what was your understanding of why he was coming to you on the morning of the 19th of April to discuss the OptiSim report he had sent to you and others the night before? It was centering around that we were running into the channeling problem and that we could be losing circulation. And did you gather from Jesse's comments when he was telling you that, that he was concerned about BP's decision to use fewer than Halliburton's recommended number of centralizers of 21? Did you gather that from his comments? Well, he, he brought it up he, that, you know, that, he, that given, you know, going back to the six centralizers in his mind, that was going to increase the risk of the ECDs again. And, it, and it, he did not like the idea of there being channeling in the well. Jesse didn't like that. Right. And, then and he told was, you that on the right. morning of the 19th. That, that we were back at the risk of the, and that we could see channeling, which would spike the ECDs and have the lost circulation, in which case we talked that then, and I said, well, fine, I mean, if that happens, we've got the bond log equipment there, and that we need, we, we'll have to go down through the remedial squeeze right. work. Right, and do the bond log after the cement job had run, and, and after the time to allow the cement to set up, the right. CBL. To, to run the log, you know, if we had had losses, we'd run to identify where the top of cement was, and then look at the squeeze process. Did you, uh, did you tell Jesse that you were going to check with the other engineers on your team to follow up and explain to them what his concerns were and your concerns? I, I looked. Yes or and, no? Yes. Okay. I, I told him I'd follow up with uh, John Guide. Okay. Well, after you and Jesse met that morning and he explained his concerns about the, 
the lack of the central number of centralizers and the channeling and the ECD is increasing. You shared all those views with him, correct? Yes, sir. And you told him you were going to talk to Mr. John Guy. Did you do so? Yes, I did. And did you tell John of your concern <coughs> that with the use of six centralizers that there would be channeling, possibility of channeling? Yes, I did. Did you tell him that that also, in your opinion, could give rise to an increase in ECDs? Yes, I did. When you told Mr. Guide of Jesse's concerns expressed during the meeting with you on the morning of the 19th, and the fact that you shared those concerns, uh, who made the decision thereafter to still go with only six centralizers? Was that John Guide who no, made that decision? Sir, I, uh, John and I discussed this, and we both agreed. It was both of us. Both of you agreed to it. Yes. And what I hear you saying, you and John Guide talked about those concerns of Jesse that you say you shared with Jesse. The two of you talked about it, and the two of you together assumed those risks on behalf of BP, did you not? We, agree, we decided, to, in our judgment, to stay with the repositioning the six centralizers. And you knew that was a risk. Yes. And, but and you and John decided that even though that was a risk of using only six centralizers, as you said, using your words, it was a risk, you on behalf of BP, you and John Guide assumed for BP that risk, did you not, by going with six centralizers? Exactly for him. Yes, sir. And you know that on the morning of the 19th, when you and Jesse talked about the lack of centralizers, increase in ECDs. He also told you then he was concerned about the gas flow problem that would be caused by that in the morning of the 19th meeting. He told you that, didn't he? I don't recall him stating it as a problem like you're depicting it. Well, you don't deny it, do you? He did mentioned the, that, that, that the gas flow had gone up to severe. And, and, and he then mentioned we that went, on the morning of the 19th of April, that, that, didn't that, he? Yes, sir. What I understand you to be saying is that if the negative test had been interpreted correctly on the day that it was performed, whether it was the first or second one, whichever it was, if it had been interpreted correctly and shown it was not a good test, there would have been no displacement to follow. Yes, if, 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 they, had, if they had performed the test and they felt it was net, had failed, then they would not, the, the, it would, we would not be displacing. Would you agree with me on this, that if in fact the negative test were to have been determined to have been not a good result, a failed test, there would have been no displacement till there had been a determination made as to what was wrong with there. I think if they had determined that if it was, had failed, that yes, they would not proceed to the next step.